so you wanna be the king of games. But your matches all end the same. I've got just what you need. Feel free to SMD. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MPT, back with another episode of SMD, the quick and dirty way for filthy net deckers to no skill their way up the master duel ladder. Today we're preparing for the NR tournament with Flip Control. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Looking for a place that anyone can upload Master Duel decks and get feedback from the community? Want to give opening Master Packs a try without spending real money? Want to know the gem cost of a deck before you actually commit? Then head on over to www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's fu- are we past the first minute? Now let's freak around with Flip Control for Master Duel's upcoming normal and rare only format. Flip Control is a deck that's not exactly Crawler, not exactly Tin Dangle, and held together by the glue that is Subterror Succession. It's the worthy successor to 2005's Pac-Man, 2006's Tsukiyomi Time Seal, 2016's Prediction Princess Pot of Taboos, and 2017 Trinity Format's Subterror Shadow. In this slower, less explosive format, you have time to take over games with individual one-for-ones and searches, all while punishing your opponent for daring to play the few removal spells actually worth running. This deck is equal parts Crawler, playing a small suite of removal options as a pretense for World Legacy Survivors and Mind Meld into Deus Ex, and Tin Dangle, playing the incredibly powerful and very recently imported to the TCG Jarelf and Intruder to wall up, all while searching any flip monsters you want. When it comes time to turn the corner, you can do so using a card literally first printed in 2001, Summoner of Illusions. This monster allows you to cheat a fusion monster from your extra deck out for one turn, and while there are a ton of powerful options in the Invoked and Magistus tribes, Gaia Drake the Universal Force stands out as a Towers that resists Summoner's own end of turn destruction. Two quick notes before we get into the card by card. One. This is a deck exclusively for play in the upcoming NR format event. Do not take this on ladder. And two, I want to talk a little bit about this card, Guard Dog. When this deck was at least fringe playable in the TCG in about 2016, Guard Dog was a consideration. On paper, it reads very well. It's like a one-sided Vanity's Fiend if you can actually flip it up on your opponent's turn. But in practice, it was enabled specifically by cards like Prediction Princess Teratai that we don't have access to. The only thing we can use to flip it up on our opponent's turn is this, World Legacy Pawns, and we'd much rather be flipping up a Deus Ex Crawler or a Crawler as a removal spell. Secondly, because NR format is different and less explosive, many decks will not be performing long special summoning related combos, and as a result, sometimes this card will be completely dead. I don't think it's worth running, but your mileage may vary. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the Crawlers. Each Crawler has the same secondary effect with the exception of Deus Ex, which is if it's sent from the field to anywhere while face up by your opponent's card effect, you can summon two Crawlers with different names from your deck in face down defense position. They all each have a flip effect. Crawler Spine is Man Eater Bug, Axon destroys Spell Traps, Gleal specials a Crawler from your hand or graveyard in attack or defense, Receptor adds a Crawler from your deck to your hand, and Ranveener adds up to two Crawlers from your graveyard back to your hand. Deus Ex is the best monster you can be summoning off the second effect of these crawlers. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets this face down monster, you can change this card to face up defense position, negate the activation, and if you do destroy that card, and after it's flipped face up, while it's in the monster zone, all monster effects activated on your opponent's field are negated. It is a VFD that for some reason is normal rarity. Next up, we've got the three Summoner of Illusions. This card can allow you to summon a fusion monster from your extra deck, but destroy it during the end phase for the low cost of a tribute of one other monster he cannot send himself. After that is Tin Dangle Drelth, which is an incredibly pushed card. It can take one flip monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. And if it's in your hand, you can discard one other card to send a Tin Dangle from your deck to the graveyard, except for Tin Dangle Drelth. And if you do, special summon this card in face down defense position. If the card you send is Tin Dangle Intruder, it will immediately summon itself. And this card on flip adds a Tin Dangle card from your deck to your hand. It's defensive and it adds a ton of cards to your grip. After that, we've got one copy of Vishutta. This is limited in this format, but very much worth playing as removal. We're playing three copies of World Legacy Survivor. This card is absolutely 
absolutely bonkers in any deck even touching World Legacy cards. You get to excavate the top five cards of your deck if you find a Crawler or a World Legacy, you add it to your hand, and you bin the rest. Now, if you whiff, those cards don't get binned, which is why this card wasn't played everywhere. After that, we've got some format staples, three MST, three Book of Moon, three Compulsory Evacuation Device, and three Paleozoic Dynamicious. So happy this is a rare, it's going to be great for the format. After that, we've got three copies of World Legacy's Mind Meld. If your opponent's monster activates an effect while you control a face-up crawler, the activated effect becomes returning face-up monster your opponent controls to the hand. Now, they do get to choose, but this is a way you can trick your opponent into triggering the secondary effect of your crawlers, even if they are unwilling to remove it with a removal spell. It's also extension if it goes to the graveyard by something like a World Legacy Survivor. After that, we've got three sub-terror succession. This through a series of ridiculous moves, allows you to pivot between crawlers uh, by sending them via its effects and then adding other crawlers with different names. It is functionally a way to search any flip effect monster or search anything from flip effect monsters. Think of it like Small World, but your starting bridge always has to be one of the worst cards you've ever read. And finally, World Legacy Pawns is the reason this deck is playable. It allows you to target a face down monster you control, change it to face up attack or defense position, and shuffle a crawler back into your deck to do the opposite. In the extra deck, we've got Invoked Raijin, Invoked Purgatrio, Invoked Aegides, and Iwas. These are all mechanisms to OTK with Summoner of Illusions under different conditions, but most importantly, we have three Gaia Drake, the Universal Force. This is the best summon off of Summoner of Illusions, and it can be targeted by or destroyed by the effects of effect monsters, not only your own, but also your opponents, which makes it very powerful. We're playing Crumble, Logos, and Cursed Javelin. Theoretically, we could make these with the three Paleos we're playing. We're playing Grand Pulse, Bamboozler, and Jaja. We do play a lot of three-star monsters. And then a Monk of the Tenyi for the Vachetta, a Geonator Transverser. Get ready to play a lot around this. This is a format staple, and one Berserker of the Tenyi to Ooga Booga hit hard. So with that, let's check out a game. Our match is up against Yosenju Kaiju, and it's not hard to see why this deck is so hyped going into NR format. If you've read any of the coverage on Master Duel meta, you know that there are a couple of really accessible bosses that every deck will likely be playing that aren't affected by opponent's monster effects. If you don't have one of your unsearchable traps, then you are a sitting duck against these cards, and they will slow the game down to a snail's pace. Kyoto Waterfront ensures you always have removal in the form of Kaijus. Our hand isn't fantastic, but this game is going to go long, so it doesn't matter too much. We're going to begin with a World Legacy Survivor, we find a Pawns, and it's just so shocking that this card has never seen serious metagame contention. We drew a card and binned four from the top of our deck. Our opponent will go comma two into Isna to draw a card. At end step, we're going to activate Pawns to flip up the spine that we set, destroy their comma two. That Kyoto Waterfront still at two, so they can't search. We'll go for Survivor here, and unfortunately, you are seeing why it never saw serious metagame contention. We whiff here, and everything just goes to the bottom of the deck. Ah, oh, Vachetta, maybe later. We'll go for Pawns next. We're going to shuffle back the Receptor, probably should have done that first, to set down the spine. We'll banish this copy of Waterfront. It resists destruction, not banishing. We'll send a copy of Intruder, and it's time to get the Ranveener train rolling. We'll pawns to flip up our copy of Spine, then we will sub terror Succession to go for a Receptor before flipping up on our turn this copy of Ranveener to get the Spine back. We draw the Mind Meld, so we want this Ranveener to remain face up. We'll attack into our opponent who activates one of their many Battle Faders. They will tribute over our set card for a Kaiju. We will Mind Meld on the effect of their comma 3, then Chain Pawns to tuck down our Radiance, so the only monster they can target with the the now rerouted effect of Yosenju, comma, 3 is our Ranveener. This means that after Mind Meld and the comma's resolution, we'll be able to summon from our deck two crawlers with different names. Let's go for Deus Ex Crawler and Spine. Uh, flip those for Geonator reasons. In a new chain, we will summon back the Tindangle Intruder that we discarded off of Dynamicious. At end step, our opponent will put their monster back. We'll flip up both the Kaiju and the Intruder in order to get a Jerelth to hand. We'll set the Jerelth and flip up this copy of Deus Ex. We'll proceed to the battle phase and... Okay, zero damage once again. We're going to use Pawns to flip up this copy of Drell to get oh, Summoner of Illusion. So happy to be playing this card in this deck. Our opponent's going to go for comma 2 and then chain Torrential so it will resolve even though Deus Ex Crawler is on the field. We're going to chain the effect of Pawns so at point of resolution this Torrential will destroy the face-up copy of Spine. This means after everything is said and done, we'll be able to activate the effect of Spine in Graveyard in order to summon from our deck two different Crawlers. Now we are pretty low on Crawlers so we'll take what we can get here. Uh, a Gleal is really good and an Axon is only okay. Our opponent's going to Go ahead and resolve the effect of comma 3, getting Isna, and then on a new chain, we will go ahead and summon back this intruder. They'll go Isna to draw a card, then proceed to the end step. Still no good attacks for them. That's through a Torrential Tribute. We'll go Gleal here in order to bring back this copy of Deus Ex Crawler, and then we'll set the Summoner of Illusions, flip it up with this copy of Pawns, tribute that Gleal we just flipped up, and Gaia Drake, the Universal Force, has made it onto the field. Now, I wanted to show off how this card sticks around at the end of the turn, despite Summoner of Illusions' text, but they summon Oyam, and I might as well walk into it. They're going to use the effect of Oyam to get a 
comma three, and uh, we'll set one and pass. They're going to begin with a copy of Vachetta. That's kind of a problem for me, so I will Book of Moon that. From here, they're going to go for the comma one. We will activate pawns, flipping up our Deus Ex Crawler at point of resolution. That comma one is going to be negated because we have a flipped Deus Ex. From here, it should be a hop, skip, and a jump to lethal, though we do lose our Summoner of Illusions. I had hoped to activate that a second time. We draw for turn. Let's begin with a copy of pawns. We're going to shuffle this spine back into the deck to flip down the intruder. Learned our lesson from last time. Let's go for Survivor and rewarded. There's the spine first thing. Oh god, we actually mill a ton, including a Vishada here. That's definitely game. Uh, we're going to take the spine, normal summon a Jarelth, and then link summon a copy of Geonator Transverser to take our opponent's set copy of Vishada. We'll flip up the Vishada and then activate Mind Meld in order to summon from our graveyard a Glial to the link point of the Transverser. We'll summon back the Intruder here as well in face down defense position before making a Berserker of the Tenyi. From here, we can activate the graveyard effect of our own Vishada to bounce the remaining Yosenju and get in for exact lethal. So we're back with the deck, and ah, these games are so long, you get to show off everything you want to in one of them. I'm really excited to be playing this deck in the upcoming format. It's a little lower power than stuff like Metal Foes, which I imagine will be absolutely everywhere, but I hope to see some of you flipping on ladder as well.